Good morning, Corky here, coming to you from Hamilton, Alabama. Um, I wanted to make a few remarks about um, playing in a band. Obviously, bands are a luxury in terms of uh, equipment, people's availability. A lot of times when you're in a band, People have families, older people like myself, uh, they have a lot of commitments that they <clears throat> have to their family and community or the church, and uh, it's not always practical to have a band. So for that uh, reason, the, um, the rise of uh, technology and providing things like tracks and other um, recording um, equipment and things that make it possible to provide your own band. That is, if you're a true musician and you um, play a number of instruments, uh, you can just hide away in your man cave or your basement or wherever set up to record and you can be your own band. There are some advantages to that. And especially in retirement, it uh, gives you an opportunity to um, make, you know, music on a wide scale uh, without having to have other people working for you. Um, there are drawbacks to this new technology, uh, which um, <clears throat> causes uh, these, these technological advances and features and products uh, to actually prevent us from growing as a person. Uh, you know, I've talked about... Uh, bands as support groups for a, for a while and I am really committed to the fact that when you approach music socially um, there is a great a range of advantages you're going to hear my dog buddy whining outside he never does it he's been in all for you know 15 hours um, <clears throat> so I want to talk first of all about community versus individualism. So in order to play music, it's very similar to playing sports. Um, and I use the term play literally, uh, not just perform. I would use the word perform, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual playfulness of music <clears throat> so that um, when you do it in a group or with other people, there is a social interaction that takes place. Um, a lot of times artists talk about their audience being their community, but when you perform on a stage and you've got that, that, that huge separation of area physically, <clears throat> Uh, you're not really interacting with the community. You are delivering a product. And so uh, in order to um, interact with people, uh, it's necessary to play, you know, play music in a different way. <clears throat> I know <clears throat> some uh, retired people who... Um, uh, throughout their life was in bands, but then when they retired, one old man told me the other day, I think it was at a an outdoor event I was playing at, and, and he was clearly a musician, and I said, you know, where do you play? And he said, well, I have a karaoke set up in my basement, which I thought was very sad, um, because he had spent the majority of his life playing music and creating music, and now he 
goes in and tries to sing to these tracks, um, it's much more fun to do such a thing in a group of people at a party. <clears throat> um, if you're going to be a solo artist without a band, <clears throat> then it's necessary as a guitarist, and I'm just, you know, lifting out one instrument, but it'd be true of all piano, keyboards, <clears throat> then I encourage you to learn to play fingerstyle uh, in order to be able to do a whole song uh, by yourself, playing the melody and the um, rhythm parts and the bass on the same instrument. Piano, that is um, generally assumed to be one of the skills that you use to play and that is very, very, very uh, helpful and valuable, especially if you don't consider yourself to be a singer like I don't consider myself to be one. Um, I can sit down and play instrumental guitar or piano, uh, some songs, uh, but, you know, there's great advantage to interacting with other musicians. Uh, not just because you are not proficient to play every instrument, but that everyone has a contribution to make, you know, in this life. Um, further in the area of bands as social music, um, bands provide a certain accountability. For example, if you're your, just your own solo uh, player and you're doing a wrong chord like I did uh, a wrong chord in the Beatles song Michelle for over 50 years uh, and all of a sudden one day you know it becomes obvious that it, it's a, uh, a B major seventh and not a B minor that I thought it was when you're playing in a band, that comes about quicker. You have that, that, that uh, it comes more sooner than later. When someone tells you, let me show you the correct chord here, or what about this note here? And uh, so you grow and develop as a musician with having people listen to what you're playing and giving you somewhat of a critique. Um, not just about the notes and the chords or the scales or what what have you, but also concerning your attack, your technique, uh, like that. And then you can learn by watching other people. Uh, the accountability structure is also uh, important because um, the occupational hazards of music uh, playing music, especially on the popular level, uh, brings alcohol and drugs into the the scene. Uh, it just always has been that way, unless you're just a total church player. And so to be in a group or a band <clears throat> who are seeking sobriety, well, that's a big help because um, they see you f week in, week out, the band members do, and they know how you're doing. Um, so that aspect of accountability is built into bands. Um, also, I want to talk about sharing versus success. There are a lot of really depressed uh, music players out there in TV land that are... Uh, very discouraged because they're not getting calls or or they're, especially the pandemic, they can't go out, play out. Um, and they feel like their career is not succeeding. Also, there are those who, when they're a part of a band set up, um, are not happy with 
the creative thing that is taking place from as a result of these people gathering together and they have another idea about their career they they're thinking of themselves as being something totally different than the way the band is you know come out with the music um and i hate that for you um uh, but you know we have to stand in line at the dmv and even mcdonald's uh it's just all a part of life waiting on people and being able to encourage people even <coughs> when when they're not producing you know on the level we think they should <coughs> the um the preferred outcome would be sharing expression uh it would be better to have expressed a gift uh, to the world than for you to be successful. If you can be successful, that's great. Um, the technology has impacted the music industry in such a way at this time that uh, success is more and more fleeting for musicians because of like, you record, you download music, let's say you got a network like I do, where you download your albums and when you record them and they go out and they are streamed at um, whatever. They immediately go on YouTube a lot of times at individual songs as an individual video with just the album cover up coming up. Um, I was surprised to find that all my albums did that. Uh, and then there's you know, the other streaming um, platforms and musicians make minute or almost no royalties um, because of the democratization of music that's taken place where people can stream music at any time, 24 hours a day without having to buy an album or buy a CD. And so consequently, they're just record sales, or as we call them, um, are just shot uh, because people are streaming the music and they're not paying for it. Um, well, if you're just out to share or express your gift to the world, uh, that's not a problem. It's actually an advantage uh, because you uh, get to share it with a large number of people. One example is I get um, the uh, the stats uh, from where my music is uh, on streaming platforms worldwide, and I, I it even tells me what countries uh, listen to my music more. Um, I was not surprised to find that Latin America was a place where my music was frequented because it's guitar music and mandolin and so forth like this. Uh, one of my songs, Pick Up My Heart Again, has had tremendous amount of airplay in places like South Carolina, which was a surprise. But at any rate, uh, if your goal is sharing, then that's not altogether a sad situation. Then finally, realism versus perfection. Uh, I've had a number of music producers uh, own their own studios, some I've recorded with, some I haven't, uh, who have this one behavior that I have noticed, and that is if a man owns a studio and he's producing music, uh, if he if he records a local band, and a lot of those studios, that's about all the business you get. Um, if you do record other people, uh, I've seen a number of my friends uh, staying after the band has left or the vocal group has left and working all night long to try to perfect the um, the performances on tape or on uh, digital 
that the band did earlier in the day, and that he's not satisfied with it as having been a product that he has his name on. <clears throat> and consequently, he ends up spending much more of his time uh, in the studio working than the, than the profits coming in, you know, financially for the recording studio. So he, he uses up a lot of money just going in there and fixing things and repairing things. And of course, if you if you are a more or less laid back musician like I am, uh, you're gonna hit wrong notes, you're gonna make mistakes. And if you're doing this home recording with digital equipment, you've got the cut and paste feature. And that's a real lifesaver uh, for us because once something goes down on tape, you can't take it out unless you just to totally erase everything else. Uh, and this is why in music recording, you know, there's this um, anxiety about, you know, so many takes to get it perfect. Well, in the digital world, you just, you can take out that wrong note, you know, and substitute something else, do a, you know, punch in on that. Um, but producing a perfect product um, is, I think a dead end street uh, because people don't listen to music perfectly and uh, the dynamics and the experience of live music uh, is a great deal more uh, impactful on people's lives. And uh, I'm all in favor of of people playing together in a natural way. You're gonna have some mistakes along the way, um, but you're playing music and it becomes a community thing. Uh, if you're a perfectionist, which I'm not, uh, then you will have a problem. You never will be able to like lead music activities with children or individuals with developmental disabilities because they're not going to do it perfect like you're wanting it done. Now, it's cool, you know, I, my sister-in-law is a choir director and she does contest choir singing. She directs the choir and uh, she wins a lot of contests and that's great. You know, there is a place for music as a... Uh, what should I say, music as a competitive activity. You know, I entered, I've played in guitar contests before. Some of my favorite guitar players were uh, Winfield Winters in Winfield, Kansas, uh, which I have spent time in that city. And some of my friends and people that I follow after uh, have won the Winfield uh, Kansas National Flat Picking Contest. There's a place for that. I played in the, I won round one of the uh, Guitar Center King of the Blues contest in Knoxville several years back. Uh, so that there's a place for competitive playing. But in terms of the human dimension, not the financial dimension or not the uh, reputational dimension, but this the social dimension, uh, you know, you, you're gonna play with people that are not gonna be all that skillful. And you have to have a place for that. And the more that you allow them, the better they're gonna become. So I'm a, I'm a real uh, supporter of live music and playing in bands, I think it's a good experience. And you should try it. And you, you can still do that. You can still have people come over to your home, like I do every Thursday night, and have a number of musicians show up and create music together. Well, these may seem like really simple ideas, but I do believe that there are a lot of great players out there that are not being exposed to the public because 
they're waiting on everybody to get ready to listen to them. And it's not all about you. It's not all about me. I hope you have a blessed day. I'll be in 